All right, what's up, people? So uh, this is where we left off last time, okay? And we made a little script to go ahead. Let's see what one is here? Get rid of one. Um, we made a little script to change the font, right? Okay. You're not gonna see anything. This is the same font, but that's the deal. Okay, so we don't want to come here all the time and for every reboot and change our font before we begin okay and I've done previous tutorials on this before and we're going to make a directory we're going to make it global make dir verbose and we'll say user bin we're going to create a safe directory okay I'm going to call it port me and I want to copy change font this is ah dot sh over to user bin port me and I'm gonna say change font with no sh okay okay so let's go up and check that one out so we'll say cd into user bin port me okay and this is our program okay and now from within this directory here I want to go and I want to link that full path names. I can say user bin port me change font to user bin. Okay. Okay. And I think that's right. Yeah, that's right. All right. So good thing I didn't say exit. <laughs> um, let's go to sources now. Okay. You see that the, the script we made is nowhere around us. But if we say change font, it would work. Okay, it just changed to the same font. Like I say, I want to incorporate some type of maybe array into it so I could add args to it. Okay, Let's say ones, twos, threes, and actually make it get bigger or smaller. But um, I'll have to figure that out later. Okay, so our script is global. Okay, we can use it from anywhere, and that's cool, and that's really going to come in handy now. So, if we go to cd into etsy init.d okay inside of here these are all our um, init files where they start up and run at boot okay take a look here and we can list out um, our rc rc s maybe let me let me jump back up cd into init.d etsy init.d cd rc.d okay um, rc.d is one up from here okay etsy rc.d and in the rc files you can say cd into rc dot rc s dot d and you'll notice all this stuff here okay these are all the same things that's already in our um you see here that there's there's a few things that aren't here but these are all our start scripts okay these are actually what starts the machine um but they all point back to if you say lsl they all point back to init scripts that are already here okay these are just um um rc levels okay okay so they all point back to scripts that are um already out there so that's what we're going to do we're going to go back up and we're going to cd into init.d and we're going to create an rc script right here or we're going to actually create a uh startup script that we're going to plug into an RC level somewhere okay so uh, try to define your programs away from the system programs okay don't make them so similar because you might lose track okay and the way I like to define them all the time is just throwing an underscore in there usually usually system files don't have so many underscores a few may but usually some of them don't so let's say vi and we're going to vi set underscore 
set underscore font. Okay, so we're gonna call it and we say bin uh, bash. Sometimes it may be good to do an sh here for POSIX, but that's more for portability. I'm not really worried about portability right now. I should, but I'm not gonna worry about portability. Um, POSIX deals with old, um, old, uh, it's old POSIX. So, and I'm not really expecting to port this anywhere yet. Not even, <laughs> this is just a stupid little script. It's not really gonna go that far. So, um, I want to throw some comments in here, and I'm going to say, um, sets default font, sets default font, or maybe let's say something like, that's good enough. Sets default font. Now, what do we want this script to do? Okay. Um, I don't want it to do anything but run our global program already, which is change font. Okay. And right quit. And what that's going to do is, as soon as you boot up the machine, okay, it's going to select your default font. When it hits the run level three, and I'll show you in a second, it's going to hit the default font and you can still manipulate it you can still manipulate it as you go along okay so it's gonna run up it's gonna start default font whatever your default font was selected to be it's going to um, run that by default okay and then if you want to change your font any other time you can always say change font okay and then change that font down to whatever like that okay okay so we have a init script here and I want to say LSL and if you notice I'm going to grep out set font okay if you notice here it's not executable well we should make that executable um, so that it runs at runtime okay so let's change mod change mod this I'm not going to say X I'm going to say change mod for both 0755 and set font. Set font. Okay. So now let's look at let's look at our LSL. And it says here, uh, I don't have any GPM, I'm sorry. But you can I'm gonna prep out set font again see here that we're read write executable and that's okay but we're a little different than the rest of the programs in here um, I don't think this really makes too much of a difference okay I don't think it makes a difference at all but uh, let's not test the limits all right so let's change mod that let's say six five or seven five four okay and now we can uh, list it out and grab for it. We see that we have the same permissions as the rest of everything else. Okay? Good. Good deal. Good deal. So that's done. And that's okay. But just because the init script's here doesn't mean it's going to work. Okay? That's a little different than uh, some slackwares. Well, I know on 14, all you have to do is make the. Um, well, it's, it's kind of different. But just because it's here, it doesn't mean it's going to work. So we have to go and pick a run level for it to work in. So I'm going to say CD up into RC. Remember our run level is 0 through 6, okay? 0 is our cold start, 6 is dead, alright? And um, we have run levels like 1, it brings up certain things. Um, 2 brings up a certain amount of other things. 3 is our stable run level, okay? That's where we have our network um, comes up and is alive. Um, four would be where our uh, GUI would be, okay. And five is I think this I think according to the book it says five is the same as four, so I'm not sure. And six is the kill level, okay. 
And RCS, RCS is um, just a collection of uh, one level scripts that go there. Okay, so if we go to cd into rc 3.d, list that out. So we have two things here. Um, like I said, the run levels are uh, signified by S and K. S means start, K means stop. Okay. So in run, run level six, you'll see a lot of Ks. Okay. And in run level zero, you'll see a lot of Ks too. And that's just making it a nice um, bed for. It's a fail safe. Of course, there's nothing going to be running when you, uh, you know, the there's not going to be anything running at that time or run level zero but at the same time um, it ensures that nothing's running by stopping stuff first okay even if the stuff doesn't exist it still makes a clean bed for the uh, the next process to go ahead and latch on to that or to start so that's that but um, here we are here and I want to create a link right here call it link symbolic for boost I'm going to use a full path and say etsy init.d I'm going to link um, set font there we go set font I'm going to link that and I'm going to make my own uh, number to hook in on so I'm going to say I want to start and I'm going to say 95 because I haven't seen 95. You want to kind of uh, choose your names kind of iffy. All right. For example, SysKlog uh, S10 SysKlog is going to start before S20 network. Okay. Why? It's a different S number. Um, this is not really. It's important, but I don't want it to convolute with anything else that may run at that time. I do know there is a 90, okay, and S90 is something else, uh, I don't know uh, exactly what it is, but I know it exists. 95 is uh, a different, um, it's different. You can always say list out RC start levels, okay, you can always list them out and you can um, kind of get an approximation on who's going to be running what at what time, okay. Now, you can see here uh, UDEV and all that stuff. UDEV is also S10, okay? And that's not in this directory. But even if it was in this directory, you, you kind of don't see the same uh, run levels, the same startup numbers in that run level directory. You usually see them a little off, high or low, or something else like that, okay? Depending on the order that they need to be run on. Okay. Of course, uh, something like S00 Mount Virtual FS is going to be way below Mount FS because Mount FS couldn't exist if Mount Virtual L, you know, didn't exist. And five modules there, you know, you, that's very important. You need those. Okay. So I don't want to make my script something like zero or or um, or one zero S zero. S00 or S10 or S15 even because I really don't need to see that output that's coming out and it's also better to it even if it was small when it's coming out it's kind of better to see it small that way you get a big picture of if it's going to fail you'll notice your fails happen on the right hand side of your screen with a big font like that it might throw it off a little bit and you, you might not catch it right away when you're looking at it so but for me I'm going to say that um, S 95 is okay. It's okay. So I'm going to say link symbolic for both a uh, full path. We'll call it init.d. We'll say set font. And we're going to link that to s95. And I'm going to call it set underscore font. Okay? Now I'm going to do this from within the directory, the RC3 directory. Okay. Okay. So if I type it there, you see that um, S95 is there. That's my link into the run level, my hook. And if I list it out, it's executable. Okay. And you see it's pointing right back to my set font script 
which is actually up here in the init.d file. Okay? So that's good. That's good. That should work. Okay, so um, that's all I got for right now. And the next one, I'm going to show you how to reconfigure your kernel. You um, you may have problems like I did. Uh, all the other LFSs seem to go ahead and they picked up default modules and everything right away. And I never really had a problem booting, except for some syntactical errors or maybe I didn't, you know, understand the book properly or something else like that. But come to find out, in this situation, I understood the book, the book perfectly <laughs> and I went over it several other times it took me about 10 hours to actually figure out what's going on and the problem is I just didn't have any um, I don't have the drivers loaded into my kernel it didn't get them now it got some I have a uh, ether etheros etheros uh, wireless wireless driver wireless card and a Realtek ethernet card Okay, in the same computer, and it wasn't picking up um, both of them. So, um, but it did actually. It got uh, real tech right, and it got some other stuff right, but it didn't get the exact driver that I needed for my exact cards. Okay, so that's what I'll do in the next tutorial. I'll show you how to go ahead and do that, and that's uh, that's not too complicated. It's a lot of digging. Okay, a lot of people with Broadcoms, if you have a Broadcom, you may have a problem with that and uh, whatnot like that. But usually, uh, when you unpack a kernel, you're good to go. It uh, it used to, anyway, it used to recognize, you know, pretty much what you needed and um, stuff like that. So I'll, I'll show you how to get rid of that. So if you reboot your machine, you should be able to uh, have your new font on. So, hope this worked for you. It's a pain looking in the teeny tiny font. I'll see you later.